when I met uh, Mario and Marisa or around 1965, she was naturally very shy, totally dedicated naturally to the family, and to Mario and to Beatrice, but also at the same time starting to express herself uh, around 1965-66. So when I start to meet her, naturally we spend a lot of time in the kitchen discussing, and as you can see, there was no trace of a real and art object. You know, you can see the number of Fibonacci by Mario on the wall, and on the top, that looks like a coverage for the kitchen, there was a piece of Marisa Mertz. And this is the first beginning, and you don't understand because life and, and, uh, and work for them, and especially for Marisa, were very strongly connected, which means is a kind of portrait. Whatever you talk, and whatever you will see also around in the gallery or any institution, the Serpentine Gallery and so on, more and more are talking about the situation of herself, which is the situation of a woman, starting to work in 1965, 66. And as you can imagine, at the time, there was no chance, there was no way to be recognized or slowly to be recognized, and that feminism period was not around yet. So it's a moment where, you know, Eva Esse, Louise Bourgeois, Marisa Mertz, all these women, they start to make history. As you can imagine, the period of 1966 was totally dominated by two languages. One was pop art, was already recognized in 1964, and minimal art. So the idea to do something that was chaotic, that was connect with the netting, in a certain way. Nighting nature is a, is a gesture of female figure. I think it's important to see the chaotic part because the disorder was language in a good way. Disorder, energy, very physical, very dangerous also. The idea of cutting this material was also cutting your fingers because of metal. So there is a soft element, but always with Marisa, there's also a tough element. The idea of softness, the idea of a morbid material was totally against the rigidity. Naturally, masculine, rigidity, and softness of the female part. So that was immediately a code of languages that was adapted by the female artist against this kind of absolute reality that was industrial, was rigid, was metallic, was plexiglass, was something that create this kind of power of invasion, while naturally in the female elements, the invasion was, you know, was accepted and was soft. And the idea of softness by Louise or Eva Esse became part of the fragility of the work. So the fragility became language. That's the altalena, swing. Yeah. The idea is to be part of life and to be also sitting not so comfortable. And now you see the purity of the piece. But at the time was kind of tools, I don't know if it was done for Bea or not, but you know, that was the feeling that we had trying to sit there. And now I can see, not as an art historian, you can see all the relation with minimal, the ephemerity, you can see that it's movable, it's not rigid like the minimal art. So there was something unconscious, you know, you can never explain when you are there, you can never explain what you produce. I'm sure Marisa will say, I have nothing to do with minimal, it's nothing to do with pop, it's nothing to do with anything. But that's part of, you know, being an art historian, try to justify, try to read. And naturally, there is this famous series, this picture has been taken I think in Anzio, and the idea of uh, what she was netting at the time. She used nylon at the time. A nylon was very strong, you know, it was very difficult to net. And uh, in fact, the ballerina shoes are very strong. You cannot bend them, but they are very light, but in the same time, they are very strong. So you can see then that this kind of gesture that was produce slowly in the house, became part of an independent object. 
So there was a gomitolo on the right, there was a kind of bracelet in the center, and there was a shoe, there was a ballerina shoes, all done with the, with the wire and done with the, you know, with the nylon. And naturally the pedestal is wax, which is a ne- very important element. You know, wax is, again, very fragile, it's melt, so it can disappear. So there's this kind of flotation. There is never an ascension. There is never an affirmation of something that has to stay forever, but is part of a life. And that's, you know, you can see these pictures. You don't know if, you know, that's part of accumulation and is a part, of, we don't know if the piece, you know, is still like that, because that's a very interesting part of the work of Marisa. She can change a piece in the process. The artist can give new life. So you rearrange the work, you retouch the work. And there's Marisa with the piece, which is kind of art. So the idea of sound, also the work as a sound, the work as a life. So this kind of picture represent also the idea that the work is not, again, a frozen element in life. You, have, you can use it. And slowly, what's happened is that she started to recuperate, to do form in space, naturally because finally she started to have more space for herself. But the symbols, tables, and naturally there was a formality in starting to net the ballerina shoes, you can see on the right, the A, which is the, a letter, because she did also a piece called Bea, dedicated to Beatrice, and the square, which is, became a kind of very easy way of netting. So in a certain way, you can see that now the articulation of her work start to be more identifiable as a language of an artist. And you can see now the museum exhibition and the start the first head with a very fragile pedestal. That's a very interesting point. And I think she did intentionally. The idea that, again, the statue, which seems strong, uh, is very fragile, can be broken, which has happened in a museum. So the chair, you will see through the artwork, become an, an element, sitting and be in the corner. And that you will see through the work. So you see the chair is very important because that's a memory of the struggle or, or the identity. You know, she sits always there. So chair is becoming the, another icon. And that's uh, one of the biggest shows she did uh, in Turin, I think, at uh, Tucci Russo, uh, where you can see there is a kind of accumulation of it's not leftover material. You know, there was a kind of a toy uh, um, of a kind of bicycle duck on the right, and uh, there was, uh, you know, another head at the end. There was this kind of recuperation of one structure, of Mario, you can see on the back. You know, you can see the metal structure. Mario was using a lot of them. A dialogue and an answer. A dialogue and a, and a different identity, you know, to establish a different identity. And actually you can see also the triangle of the swing element. And there was a lot of wax. You can see that kind of occupation of space, kind of territorial, but again, very fragile. And there's a cup and there's a wax. So there's wax, it's contained, the pedestal has two functions. One is very strong which is the traditional pedestal, but then she has her pedestal, which is a wax piece, white, and then wax on wax, and then the cup. So the cup is a container, you know, a container that always has to be filled up. It's a container that needs to be furnished every time with energy, with whatever, water. So it's a symbol of continuous life. She has been doing portrait for all her life, But to admit that her work is a portrait of her, you know, I think it's it's a very difficult gesture because, uh, first of all, all our generation, all our artists were never 
personal. You know, they were never involved with showing the identity. It's all the idea of being political, you know, 68, 69, to be uh, minimal, conceptual, body, but only about, you know, the 80 when the portraits start to come back again in art because you affirm that your face, your self-portrait is a way of telling a story. You're a storyteller about yourself. I think at the beginning she was shy to admit, so she had this veil, huh? and she covered her face, you know, as, as a kind of defense. It's not a veil of, you know, religion, it's just a veil of a little bit, be behind, you know, don't, I'm never in front. Then she started to produce more and more this kind of portrait, and the scale also changed, became bigger and bigger. She's becoming younger and younger now. She's becoming public, she's, she's, she's showing, she's, you know, uh, adding more color in her face, not white, not glaze, and so, and so on and so on. And you see now, the corner is now is bigger. Before it was very small in the house, now it's taking the big corner. Now to the chair now is becoming metal, which is heavy and dangerous. And it's again, is the show, I think it's the Pompidou. So you see now it's enlarging and uh, accepting, creating all the territory for her sculpture. And that's started a series of this kind of rice drawing. Rice, again, is very fragile, is oriental. You see how it's hanged, there is no frame. When there is a frame, the frame is done by her. And this is a large scale piece. That's, she's producing more and more. And uh, going back to a certain period, perhaps of, uh, you know, kind of more decorative moment of, uh, but very luxurious very baroque in a good way, you know, it's less minimal, less reduced, less constrained, it's more explosive. It's really an explosion of color, flame, everything. 